Okay, so ultimately there is a big goal in this class that we're going to create um, at least one app together and uh, you'll be able to create others on your own. And so we're going to create an app and from beginning to end uh, eventually it'll be released to the app stores. So it's good to have a little bit of planning before we just dive into the code. Uh, once you get on a roll and you start coding and all of that, it, it's pretty fun. But if you have a goal beforehand, it's, it works out even better to plan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch a little bit of a plan in, uh, in, the, in paint here. And you can uh, do it on paper, or you can just follow along, uh, because I'm going to plan here what I, the first task what I want to do. Ultimately, this app that I'm going to create, that we're going to create together, is going to be, it sounds a little boring, but it's an inventory tracking system. What we're going to do is uh, have a way to be able to track any kind of info that we want. Uh, one of my hobbies is that uh, I like to read and collect comic books. So we're going to create a, a comic book database. We're going to create an app where we can uh, save information on a comic book collection, let's say. But the idea is that it's an inventory tracking system. We can save a variety of data. We're going to save the name of the book, the number, the year, the artist, a photo of the, of the cover, let's say, any personal notes. Um, we're going to scan the barcode, save that information. And I want to set it up in a way that multiple people can use the app. They can log in, they can log out. So there's this idea for that project. That's what ultimately we're going toward. And um, of course, on the side, you can work on your version of things. Uh, but together, so that we're on the same page, we're going to create this inventory tracking app. The first thing we're going to focus on is creating a um, the whole login screen system. So we're going to have a screen. Uh, this is going to be like a welcome screen. Welcome screen. From here, we can choose. Um, are we simply going to uh, log in? Or are we going to sign up? When a person installs the app for the first time, they're going to be presented with those options, right? Uh, if you're brand new, obviously you're going to sign up. So there's going to be some sort of track this way. Um, so there's going to be some sort of process of signing up, which then ultimately will take you to log in. You have an account. So you want to sign in. Here's that login screen, login sequence. Then you'll have, you know, home, the home screen. From the home screen, you can do different things. For example, you'll be able to go off over here to log out. And so the options. Once you log out, it'll take you back to a logged out state, where then another person can log in with their credentials, or a brand new account can be created. From home, we'll be able to go to new item, new comic. If you came in a little bit late, the idea is we're going to create the comic book database app, the CBDB. Now we're going to be able to obviously save any amount of data we want, but we're going to focus it on here. Uh, saving a comic book inventory. So, new item. I want to save a new item to the database, the comic book database. So there'll be a screen of new item where we'll be able to do a variety of things. Uh, in, you know, save text information, photo information, barcode. All of that will go to the database. The database icon is something like that, right? It looks like a oil drum or something, but that's supposed to be the classic database icon. It's going to get saved to a database, that information to a database. Well, if we're not going to create a new item, what else could the app possibly do? 
show the items, show what's been stored, show the database. So we can have another screen, screen show, show item. Now, yes, my writing is usually that bad, not just because I'm using the digital pen. But from there, I'm going to also retrieve or store information. I may see an item that has been misspelled. So I want to change that. That's going to go back to the database. I can retrieve it from the database, make changes, and send it back. The new item <coughs> was simply <coughs> a one-way trip that I'm putting it into the database. Um, new items, show items, You can have delete or update items. Now, here I'm just kind of listing them conceptually. Screen-wise, we will be able to accomplish many things in one screen. We don't need a separate screen for delete, a separate screen for show, a separate screen for new. All of that could be in one screen if we wanted. Uh, but just conceptually, we have these different things to do. Delete or update an item. Over on the options, we could have delete account or the database. You know, I, I want to delete my account completely, delete all the data. This is the big idea of the workflow. So we have various interface screens that we need to create to show these things. We need to then set up the database. Uh, just to make notes here also about what technologies we'll be using. We're going to be using things that we've already looked at and new, new things also. So just notes here, technology or languages or frameworks. Of course, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. But we're going to do jQuery Mobile, jQuery, interface, uh, let me separate it, jQuery Mobile interface, jQuery interactivity, jQuery, uh, jQuery uh, slash JavaScript is going to do the hard work saving the data, retrieving the data, sorting the data, logging in, logging out. That's going to be the heavy lifting right there. The other stuff won't be so complicated. And all of this is going to be saved in a database called PouchDB. No server required. Traditionally, a uh, data is saved to a server uh, like uh, MySQL, or Oracle, what else is there, SQL, FoxPro, Access. You, you have a database where you can save stuff, and it's usually on a server. Uh, there's a new generation of databases called NoSQL, NoSQL, which doesn't require a server. That'll be later, but you can start to research that on your own, pouchdb.com. You learn all about it. And via uh, jQuery slash JavaScript, we will be able to create databases, save records to the database, retrieve, etc. All of the classic operations of the database. Basic structure. So this is what we're going to accomplish. Then when the app is all done, um, which of course will cover creating graphics and colors and fonts, and then of course deploying it to real devices and what we need to do there. When it's all done, then we need to create a developer account at the various app stores so we can publish the app. So it will be beginning to end. Um, I do say I suppose, ultimately, at the very, very end, you don't actually have to publish the app. You're not going to be graded on publishing the app. You're going to be graded on various other things. Although it's really cool to show off what you've done in a real app store for people to download for real. 
that'll be two months from now. Here's the big idea. General questions. So we're going to start to set up our app structure and start with the interface. And we're going to start with this very first part today. It'll take us a few days. We'll see how it goes. This whole sign in, sign out, log in, log out, sign up sequence. Set up an account, log in, retrieve password, uh, log out, all of that. That's going to be our first goal for a few days. And then we're going to start to create the other interfaces for working with the content. And we can work with this as plain old HTML in Notepad for a little while. And then eventually when we start to deploy it to real devices, uh, I forgot to add one thing, we're also going to use Notepad++, and we're also going to use Visual Studio 2017. And so a lot of pieces to this puzzle, but I've taught this class for four years, and every semester we get you know a whole group of people, 15 to 25 people, that pass the class that create an app. Uh, I've started to every semester honestly every time I teach it the class is better than last time because I you know figure out new things get new knowledge present it to the to you the students every class is a little bit different a little bit better uh, I'll show you examples of previous student work and then we'll get started with with ours you can actually go see real students work if you open a web browser and one of the app stores where we can publish to is Amazon cover all the app stores, but just to show you the fastest way, if you go to Amazon.com, you search the keyword MySDCE, you get examples of student work in previous years and semesters where they created the unofficial San Diego Continuing Education app, an app about this college, an app that had you know a catalog of classes, saving a schedule, loading it, graphics, assets, everything. So you can browse there. Everyone did the same sort of goal, different graphics. Some of them look the same. Some of them are a little more different or unique. But on all of these, it's a real store listing with a real, with a real person, a real student, with graphics that they made, um, and all the assets that needed to be published. You can look at that on your own. All of these examples in the My SDCE on Amazon. Where did the uh, login sheets go? So this is the um, example, and you'll be able to check back on them on your own there. Um, so we'll get started with, with actually doing something right now. If you see, you know, these are pictures, examples of what students have done using jQuery Mobile. Many of them have been customized with different colors and such. Um, this one was all about class, you know, saving classes and all of that. and the concepts that we will be learning will be applicable to what you want to do. We will have the ability to save data to a database, retrieve it, uh, activate the barcode scanner, Bluetooth, all that stuff. It's up to you to decide how you want to use it, but altogether we are going to create this inventory tracking app. So I'll save this graphic in the network folder a little bit later, uh, and um, you can refer to it. We'll refer to it as, as the course goes on. Okay, so the practice that we did last time of jQuery Mobile, that was to get us thinking about, we're going to use jQuery Mobile to create our interface. Uh, we're going to set ourselves up, and from scratch we will create another project, but it uh, should go faster this time because we're going to focus on other aspects of jQuery Mobile. What, what I'd like you to do first is, on your flash drive, uh, you want to set up some sort of... Uh, 
folder structure or something for your app to be saved. I've got a folder here for this class. Um, when I was designing this class, I never realized it, but I guess the initials of our class is MAD. You know, we've got Feud for the other class, and the IMCP, and this one, Mobile App Development. And I never realized it until very recently, when it was officially set up that the class is MAD. So we're all going to be MADders in here. As I said, I've taught this class uh, since 2013. And uh, originally, it was one of these open enrollment classes that anyone can come in and out. And people would come in and out, and people would finish it and such, but it was open enrollment. So it had such good attendance that the dean decided, let's uh, make this class official. Let's make it a certificate where people earn something out of it. So we took a little while. I took, I myself and the uh, department chair developed the class, and it was eventually approved. It went through the state. It was then put in the catalog, which took a while. And now you're the second class to, to actually t take the official MAD certificate class. So on my flash drive, I'm going to have a folder for this project. And I'm going to create a folder also. I'm going to call it CBDB, the comic book database. Inside of that folder, let's create a folder called CSS, and a folder called scripts, and a folder called images. So create a folder on your flash drive. I'll take that. A folder on your flash drive, and then three folders inside of that. You really want to get the other sign in sheet that is set. Everyone get the pink sheet for people sat in and do it. So here's our basic folder structure. We need some folder where our whole project will reside. We've got a folder CSS. Any CSS files will go in here. Scripts, any JavaScript files will go in here. Images. That's enough to get us started. Um, I'll take. I'll, I'll go ahead and take that. And um, well. We, we're going to get the supporting files that we need for this project. This is going to be jQuery Mobile plus jQuery. We're going to go download those files and put them in the right folder. When we did this previously, what happened was that we had connected to an online repository where those files were at. And that worked fine. But the problem is that if I don't have an internet connection, my jQuery mobile project breaks down and it looks plain, black and white. We need that connection to that online resource. And you can leave it right there, thank you. So to safeguard against that is we can download those supporting files and keep them locally. Therefore, no internet connection required. So if our app were published on the App Store and it was relying on the online version, what if the person was in airplane mode? Then, then our app would look terrible. Then they'd give us one star. And they say, look at this terrible app. It doesn't even work. So if we download the supporting files, we'll be safe in that regard. Go ahead and go to the web and go to jQueryMobile.com and I'll tell you which files to download. jQueryMobile.com The latest version of the framework is 1.4.5, and it'll work with jQuery 1.8 to 1.11 or 2.1. So we've got um, we've got jQuery, a whole family of jQuery libraries, and then we've got jQuery Mobile, which at the moment is 1.4.5. Go ahead and click on where it says latest stable. That should then simply start a download of a zip file. When that finishes, click to open the zip file. We don't need to extract the whole thing. There's lots of files inside of it. But once it downloads, I'll tell you which files from the archive we need. So once it downloads, open the zip file. The zip file has a lot of pieces. Well, the ones that we need are these three basically at the bottom. 
jQuery Mobile 145 min CSS, min JS, and min map. We need those three. Obviously, the min CSS file goes in the CSS folder. So you can just drag it out of the archive. You don't have to extract the whole archive. Just drag the min CSS file. I've got two windows, one for the zip file, one for my project. And drag the jQuery mobile min.css. There is a regular one without min. That will work, but these are the minified, more efficient versions, <coughs> production, production ready. So you want jQuery mobile 145 min CSS, put it in the CSS folder. And then the JS and the map file, put them into the scripts folder. So from that zip file, that CSS file, and these two last files, put them into the job, into the scripts folder. And lastly, this images folder, put the images folder in the CSS folder. I know we've got a folder for images, but this CSS file expects the images folder to be in the same level as this file. If we put it elsewhere, we have to edit that CSS file to point to where the images are at. The easiest way is just put the supporting images in the CSS folder where the CSS file expects it. Now we'll take a little moment. There's a lot of graphics. CSS programs to CSS in order to grow into script. CSS program to CSS in order to grow into script. So we're setting up the supporting files. Instead of relying on them online, we want them locally on our flash drive, in our project. So when we compile our project, those libraries come in with our app. Yes, they're going to make our project larger, but they're necessary. Not that larger. It is, in total, less than one megabyte. All those images and those three other files are less than one megabyte. So in order for jQuery to work, it has to be on top of jQuery. So we need to get now the jQuery library. I still have my window open here, and it says, okay, jQuery mobile works with jQuery 1.8 up to 1.11 or 2.1. We can go to jQuery.com by clicking on the first icon there. This is all part of the same family. We're in the jQuery mobile side of it. If we go up here to jQuery, we need to get version 1.8 or 2.1. I'll explain which one in a moment, but go up to jQuery. At the moment, this says this is on jQuery 3.21. I'll explain that in a moment. Go ahead and click Download. This wants you to download the latest one, 3.x. We saw a moment ago that jQuery Mobile is saying we need either 1.x or 2.x. Uh, jQuery Mobile at the moment isn't quite compatible with the 3x branch of jQuery. So we don't want to download the latest 3x. We want an older 1.x or 2.x. You'll find those if you scroll all the way down past releases. jQuery CDN. Scroll all the way down there and click jQuery CDN. Okay, so we have a 1x, 2x, and a 3x branch. 
Um, 1x was, you know, the first generation of the code. They then broke it apart, 2x, and they were developing them both at the same time. 1x would still support old browsers. 2x would not. Old browsers again. Job, uh, Internet Explorer 6, Firefox 3.0, whatever. So the 1x branch is more compatible with more browsers. But again, we are not dealing with browsers eventually. We're dealing with devices, mobile devices. So the 1x branch is a little, a little too old. The 2x branch focuses on modern devices. Eventually, then, the team got the idea, okay, let's merge it back together, 3x. So we want 2x because 3 is too new. jQuery Mobile, it says right there, this works with 1 or 2, not 3 yet. Eventually, when we get jQuery Mobile 1.5 or whatever, it'll work with jQuery 3, but we need 2. This one is saying... 2.2.4. <coughs> what did jQuery Mobile say? 2.1. Okay. See all versions of jQuery. So let's go here. Under jQuery Core, see all versions. And we'll find 2.1.0. Uncompressed or minified version. If you take a look, can't show you while I'm zooming. Well, I guess I'll show you this way. On the uncompressed version, it's going to give you whatever .js, and then minified is going to give you .min.js. We usually want the minified version because it's compressed, it's uh, more efficient, it's faster. The problem is we're not going to very easily be able to open and edit these files to look at them ourselves, but we don't need to. jQuery, jQuery Mobile, you know, Ionic, Sencha, Onsen, Angular, all of these frameworks, we just use them. The average person has no need to open the actual file and poke around in there. You just use it. Just like a car. I don't really need to know how it works, I just need to know how to drive it. So you don't need the uncompressed version, it just takes up more space, it's less efficient. You never need to open it up and, and root around in there. So we need the minified version. You want to right-click 2.1.0, right-click, and then select Save Link As. I'm in uh, Chrome, so it says Save Link As. Yours may say Save Target As or Save File As. You want 2.1.0, minified, save it, and put it into the Scripts folder. It probably will save to the desktop. Wherever it saves, probably the desktop, then move it over to your scripts folder in your project. So this is our setup. We need to have this correct before moving on. My CBDB project folder CSS, C CSS file plus its images. The scripts folder, jQuery mobile, JS, and map, and jQuery. Images folder, nothing yet. Make sure it's set up like that and we'll move on. Anyone need a little help setting that up? Yes, the images, that images folder, which is a bunch of images that came from the zip file, needs to be in the CSS folder. The images folder that we created for the moment is empty, but from the zip file of jQuery mobile, grab that images folder because it's got all of the icons of jQuery mobile. One file and one folder. In the scripts folder, we have the two files. Okay, so we will create a new 
new HTML file in Notepad. And we will save it at the root of our project so that it can access the supporting files. Open Notepad++. And in Notepad++, let's save as. project folder. We'll save index.html. Index is the default name of the very first screen of our app. It's a standard to call it that. Not home.html or welcome.html. Standard to use index.html. And this whole structure, when we get to Cordova eventually about compiling an app, it's going to expect the first screen of your app should be index.html. So in Notepad, create a file, we'll save it, index.html in the cpdb folder. In index.html, we'll create a simple HTML file. We're not going to start over it uh, that many times, but we'll do it one more time. Doc type head body. Things we've seen before. Just a quick nine lines, oh, one more thing, title, a quick ten lines. Then we'll start to use those supporting files and then we'll start to create the interface. to change notepad, to change the color scheme, to zoom in and zoom out so that you're comfortable programming. What I would ask you, however, don't get too comfortable programming in our labs because I see people move the keyboard and the mouse and you know think it's their work environment. There are other people that also come to these labs. If you change our work environment, please put it back the way it was. You know, don't leave the mouse on top of the table and the keyboard up there. Put it back where it was. But as for Notepad and such, you can change the color scheme, the sizes, all of that, and once the computer restarts, it goes back to normal for other people to use. We saw previously, when we looked at jQuery Mobile for the first time, we need another meta tag so that our, so that our project is mobile friendly. It, at this point, it doesn't quite matter where we add it in our code, but I'm going to keep it in the same area next to the first meta tag. Meta name with meta tag with a name attribute and a content attribute. <coughs> so we need the viewport meta tag with content initial dash scale equal to 1 so that it's zoomed in, user dash scalable equal to no so that the person cannot zoom around, user scalable, remember to spell scalable properly, scalable, scalable, equal to no, comma, and then width is device width.
mobile friendly viewports so that our project looks good on a mobile device on an on an Android or iPhone. Did you say maybe that maybe data flight to a regular website? Sorry, say that again? Did you say maybe data flight to a regular website? It would. This is very common to use this meta tag on an app or a website. So if you've got a website that is not mobile friendly, adding this and probably tweaking it a little bit will make it better mobile friendly. Save it and run it, just to make sure that the code so far is okay, nothing interesting, we don't have any interest, anything interesting yet. We need to link over to those libraries, which we'll do in just a moment, but at least run it at this point to see so that you don't see anything unexpected, so that your code is on track. I'm going to run it in, uh, in Firefox. Okay, so we downloaded those libraries so that we can use them, so we can upgrade our project to jQuery Mobile and start to create that interface that we did last time. Now with a goal in mind of a welcome screen, a login screen, a sign-up screen, we will be able to create those screens a lot faster. So the first thing I want to do here is link over to my CSS file, my jQuery Mobile CSS file. Next line, um, we'll do it after title. We'll add a link tag rel stylesheet. This is a stylesheet file we're linking to. href. Well, in the CSS folder, we've got that file. I'm going to go and copy and paste the name of the file so that I don't re mistype it. Which is over here, CSS folder. Copy that, paste it there. So now we're able to use data role, data icon, all of that. And it's pointing over to a file that we have in our folder, not relying on an internet connection. Previously when we did this, it was pointing to the web address, HTTP code.jQuery dot whatever, and now it's on our project folder. We'll do the same thing for the jQuery and jQuery mobile. jQuery mobile needs to work with jQuery. We add that before the end of body. This is a script. Script tag. script tag has the attribute src We're connecting to the folder scripts slash the name of the file so in the scripts folder jquery 2.1.0 in this order because it will be processed from top to bottom in the browser or the app we need to first load the jQuery mobile library because uh, the jQuery library first the jQuery library first because then jQuery mobile needs to use jQuery next line another script tag to also connect to a source and this is the other file scripts slash the jQuery mobile dot js file. To make sure that you spelled it all right, if you run it, again, comparing a moment ago, when I ran it before jQuery, the font was Times New Roman, the background was white. As soon as I add this and it worked, if I typed it right, the background should be slightly gray and the font should be Arial. So that's a way to quickly confirm that we did connect 
to the library. So here it is without jQuery Mobile. Here it is with jQuery Mobile. Slightly different, but it is different. Yes. What's up? All right, so if we've got these jQuery files, then what we're going to start to do is create new sections for the different screens that we're going to work with. All right, so here what we're going to do is create sections so that we can actually have real screens. That Hello World was temporary. I'm going to remove that, give myself a little space, create a new section, data role page. ID PG welcome. I'm going to call all my sections, give them a unique ID, of course, and I'm going to prefix them with PG. This is a page or a screen. Welcome. So I'll have a welcome screen, as I showed from my drawing earlier, a screen that will first appear when the app loads up. Then they can choose. Log in, sign up. Those will be, those will be different sections. Now, I'm gonna, we're going to set up a section a little bit first, and then we'll just copy and paste to create more sections a little faster. Because they're all the same. They all need a section. They all need a data role. They all need a header. They all need an article. They all need a footer. So if we set that up a little bit first, copying and pasting will save us effort. So, yes? And the naming convention here goes straight for JavaScript. 
it's very common in many programming languages when you have words that are run together to have a capital letter as the second one. So the naming convention, the only thing really is that we can't use like special characters and spaces and such. We can call these things whatever we want. I also see people maybe calling it welcome dash page dash welcome. That works fine too. So naming convention to a certain degree is whatever we choose it. Does it matter for JavaScript? Yes, it, it does matter for JavaScript. Uh, as long as you're not using restricted characters and spaces and symbols and such. So page dash welcome, JavaScript works fine. Page welcome, JavaScript works fine. If you guys learned it slightly different in another class, it should still work. Uh, however, you might have learned it in, in Feud. I am curious, how did, if you guys did Feud, how did you learn how to name your IDs? In MCP, it's slash or underscore. Between the letters? Yeah, that, that'll work. Dash or underscore? Yeah, so PG underscore welcome. If you're used to that, that's that's fine. So header, data role, header, data position fixed so it stays at the top. Now, because these mobile projects are so popular now, we're writing it all by hand, of course. But they, there's various companies out there that have carved out a little niche selling software for you to create mobile interfaces a lot faster. Uh, using what we're typing, but you just drag and drop. Where's the fun in that? But there is that. You can purchase that software, just drag a header to the top, drag a footer, and there it is. Behind the scenes, it's doing this code that we're doing. H1, just put top, need an article. Data, uh, this one's a little different. Role of main class UI dash content. This is a reserved class in jQuery mobile. They, did, they do name it with the dashes. So this creates our main content. And a footer. footer, data position fixed. You can just copy the same one from above. H4, foot, bottom, top, bottom, main. So this defines a whole page. If we set it up enough like this, we can do some copy and paste to quickly create new screens. The way that I will do this is this is going to be my welcome screen, but this is a sort of a template that I can reuse for more screens. So when we're done typing it, I'm going to copy and paste itself to get a copy down here and call it ID equals template. And that will be my file that I can copy and paste multiple times so I can make new screens very quickly. So just uh, save it and run it before that to make sure the code works because the good and the bad about copying and pasting, the good is that you're going to copy your code exactly. The bad is you're going to copy your code exactly. So if you make a mistake, you copied and pasted your code multiple times wrong. So one way to check if you're on the right track is if you click on a tag and it finds its pair. If the pair does not highlight, that's one way it's telling you it's not correct. If the colors, if you're, if you stayed with my default color scheme, your colors will look the same as mine. If you went to another color scheme, well, it's a different color, but hopefully the color scheme helps you. Classes and IDs are red. Values in a, in a attribute are purple. Tags are blue. Data role, data position is black. If I take a quick look in the browser, getting an interface. So 
So what I will do is this whole chunk. I've checked it in the browser. It looks like it's working as I expect. I'm going to copy that chunk of code and paste it at the bottom after the first section. We've got two exact copies of section. But then I'm calling the ID template. Every section needs a unique identifier. This is going to be our template section so I can reuse it. The whole section, yes. Start section to the end of section, everything there, copy and paste. It's not case sensitive. It is. ID is case sensitive. When we get to JavaScript, it is case sensitive. And we will use the IDs in JavaScript so it is case sensitive. All right, so save it and run it. You should only see your, you should only see one screen. This template should not show up, of course. It's separated by sections and data roles. <coughs> data role doesn't do anything unless you proper you properly have jQuery Mobile JS and jQuery Mobile CSS links. And it should look like this. Pause right here. This is what I've got so far. Uh, just to make it obvious, also in my template, yeah, I'm not really going to link to it. It's just there for me to know it's a template. So uh, I'll put a template there so that I know that it's a template if I need to use it later. Are you going to put it in your comment? Yes. So if it works properly, it's a good idea to do a little commenting, and here's how I would do it. Because comments are going to be a different color, I'm going to put a comment here say, saying, welcome, page start, and then at the end, however you want to do it, I'll say, welcome, page end. We haven't created H3, so I haven't put it, but we want H4 as the last one, H1 as the first one, and we could use H3, but I haven't used it yet. So uh, it's, uh, the program is... It'll be valid. Find out It'll, it's, H3? it's not missing. It's just I didn't include it. It doesn't have to be included. It, uh, it won't cause any sort of error. It's just logically, I don't need 3 at the moment. So in my default color scheme, green is a comment. And when I'm browsing my code, anything that pops out as green catches my attention for me to then read it. And I'm making myself a note. These 20 lines so far are the welcome page. It starts here. It ends there. When this gets longer and longer and longer, and I'm scrolling through a lot of code, this is a really good lifesaver. Because when I see this out of context section, what section is this? It's the end of the welcome section, the welcome page. Yes? Thank you. 
Once I could start writing it for relating to their classes at Kobe, we can find it find that there's some students.
All right, so at this point, uh, if you have, uh, have it running, notice what I've been doing. 
I've been opening the the uh, the browser and I kind of have it like in a small size like that. If you got to completely maximize it, it's okay, but I I make it small like that. Or what you can also do is when you're in the browser, I'm in Firefox. You can press F12 to um, open up the console. That might give you some error messages that might help you figure out what you've done. If anything is not quite right, it might give you a line number to go check out. What you can also do here in this console is, uh, depending on the version of Firefox and Chrome, this is either nicer or not, but here in whatever version we have, when you press F12 and you're looking down on this panel here, this has got responsive design mode. This icon is supposed to represent a mobile device and it's supposed to sort of simulate what this looks like on a mobile device. I'm also going to move it to the right side over here. So you've got an icon to turn on responsive, and you've also got an icon to move this panel to the right or the left, or the bottom, that is. So here's another way to look at this in a different design, so that it's a little more like a mobile device. We've got an older version of Firefox. The newest versions let you emulate an iPhone and such. Chrome also lets you do that. We'll check it in a moment. But here's another way to sort of look at your design like a mobile device. If you go into the developer's screen in Firefox and turn on responsive mode. I have to admit the version of the computers that we have here, it's going to be better if you run this in Chrome. Try this. Run in Chrome, press F12. And here they've got the icon a little bit different way. Toggle device toolbar, you click on that. Those looks like a kind of a device, but then better yet, instead of simply being in responsive mode, you can say, look at let me look at this as if I had it on an iPhone. And it kind of resizes it like an iPhone, like a Nexus, and it even looks like it's got icons like an Android device. Yes, look up here. So as soon as you run it, yeah, look up here. So as soon as you run it, you want to press F12, and then you want to hit that little icon right there. Right there. So when you turn on that icon, then you'll see the responsive mode. So I bring that up because it is useful to then look at it as a mobile device, plus your console here to debug it and all of that. Okay, so we'll take a break in just a moment, but what I want to confirm is that you've got, you've got also a copy of the section. If it worked before, I've copied it, or I can call it template, so that I can use that over and over. I'll add a comment there also on my template. Template page start. Template page end. Based on this template, I'm going to copy it, including the comment, because I'm going to use the comment at the beginning and end of a section. Might as well bring it in and just change the little detail. I'm going to copy that template and paste it. I'm going to leave the template as the very last item. I can always find the template because it will be the last chunk of code at the end. I copied a new chunk above here. There's the original welcome, so I need a new one. Section data roll page, sign up, PG sign up. PG sign up. This differentiates every section. First section, the welcome page, needs PG welcome. New one here, P 
PG sign up. This is sign up page start. Yes, it's going to do that and it's going to come back. I don't know why it keeps doing it. Sign up page end. Sign up. So based on that template, I'm, I created another page, another section. Make sure it's got a unique ID. Just put some content. We've got welcome, we've got sign up. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll start to link these two, and we'll start to set up the procedure to be able to sign up with a user account and all of that. At 7.15, we'll take a break. We'll take a break until 7.25, and then we'll go on. I'll put a copy of my code in the network folder up to this point in case you need a couple of things that might be missing, and then I'll answer your questions too.